Welcome to the first ever virtual family week concert. At ASU BB, we're super excited to welcome you into our digital landscape here on our campus's YouTube page. Uh, tonight is a celebration of all the families, whether parents, grandparents, neighbors, or friends that support our students that make up the Vanguard community. A year ago, students on our awards and recognition committee were talking about how can we celebrate? How can we recognize the family members that are so integral part of supporting student success for the individual students that make up our community? And Family Day 2020 was born. Last year, we had an in-person event right here on our BB campus where we invited families to come enjoy, play games, have a free picnic, uh, and it ended with a concert. Uh, this year, due to COVID-19, we are doing things differently. An entire week of virtual events happening uh, to celebrate students and to celebrate the families that support those students. So I encourage you to visit our website this week if you haven't already at asub.edu slash new students slash family to see all the ways that you families can participate where you are in our families week, whether that's participating in a social media bingo game or whether that's watching tonight's virtual concert, signing up for a virtual escape room. There are activities for everyone this week as we celebrate you. Right now, I'm at uh, the Arch here on our BB campus. A lot of us think about the Arch as being the center of campus, but one of the things that we realized is the business that happens on our campuses, educating students, supporting students through their own success journeys. You, the family, are, you're the center of our college environment. You walk along, along each and every one of us uh, here on campus that, that work with the college in supporting your student to be successful through the struggles that we've all seen uh, this year through COVID-19 and, and the struggles that every student has as they go through their college experience. And we wanna take this opportunity to officially thank you as families and to celebrate what you do to support your particular student. Tonight's concert uh, will be virtual. We think it will last about an hour and a half streamed right here on our college's YouTube page. You'll get the opportunity to meet some campus leaders, to see students personally give thank you uh, to their family members, and you'll get to hear some great music from Nashville's country music star, John King. Right now, it is my honor, before we get started to the music and the entertainment, to introduce to you the Chancellor of Arkansas State University, BB, Dr. Jennifer Methvin. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Methvin, and it's my privilege to serve as the Chancellor of Arkansas State University, BB. On behalf of our faculty, our staff, our administration, Board of Trustees, Board of Visitors, but always, most importantly, on behalf of the Vanguard student body, it's my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's virtual concert. You know, what we're doing here this evening, celebrating Family Week, um, it's a very important part of what we do as ASUBB. It's an initiative we call ASUB Connected. We hope to be able to not just be a university sitting in a community, but to be a place where people make connections. So Family Week is about making connections with the family members of our students. Tonight's concert is also about connecting with community members and folks who might not know anything about ASUBB. We hope you enjoy this evening. Now I tell you, you're really gonna enjoy meeting our family of the year. You're gonna enjoy tonight's concert as well. Um, it'll be a great evening for you. So join me in thanking our student leaders, our Student Government Association, the Office of Student Life, and our Lecture Concert Series Committee for this wonderful evening. Enjoy the show. Thank you, Dr. Methvin, for those kind words. We're super excited uh, to bring you, our family viewers, tonight's entertainment as we celebrate you, the families that support our students. So without further ado, I will introduce tonight's entertainer. He was CMT's top 10 country music video and you'll most likely know him as the writer of randy hauser's number one billboard hit we went ladies and gentlemen country music artist john king 
Hey, what's up, ASUB? This is John King. Thank you so much for having me for this virtual performance. Uh, it's been awesome to use these virtual concerts as a way to stay connected uh, during the quarantine and the pandemic over the past year. Um, obviously, we're missing live shows. We did one for you guys a couple years back that was so much fun. I will never forget how awesome you guys were, how energetic that concert was. So um, this is y'all's show. I called my band guys up this weekend. I was like, hey, we're going to do a virtual concert for ASUB. Um, and we did it all at our own locations here in Nashville. So um, I hope you enjoy it. It's your concert. I hope you're staying safe and healthy. And I can't wait to see you again in a live show really soon. Thanks and God bless. So the first song I want to start it off with is the song that kind of started my whole career here in Nashville. Um, it was the first song I ever wrote when I moved up to town uh, from a tiny mountain town in northeast Georgia. And uh, I hit the big city and I was a little bit, you know, in shock and uh, didn't really know anybody here. I was couch crashing. Uh, I, I walked into the first co-write, um, which is uh, basically when I say co-write, I mean uh, several writers getting in a room, coming up with an idea and writing a song. Uh, that's really kind of how things are done in Nashville. And uh, this was my first time experiencing that. I'd only written by myself. So um, it was very eye-opening to get in there with these guys who were so talented and um, had written these hit songs. And I walk in and, you know, we're all kind of introducing ourselves and talking and um, one of the co-writers looks at me and he says, you know, where are you from? I said, I'm from Georgia. He said, man, he said, everybody's from Georgia. There's so many people up here from Georgia and Nashville. Uh, he said, there must be something in the water down there. And it just immediately caught me that phrase. And I was like, man, that sounds like a good song. We should write that. And we did. And it's kind of been uh, the song I've opened shows with and started off performance with for years now because I just feel like it's kind of an introduction to me as an artist uh, to my career as a songwriter and an artist. So uh, I want to play you guys this one. It's called Something in the Water. One, two, three, four. Hey. Hey. Vicar man said, son, let me hear what you got. A word on the street is that you're pretty high. You Georgia boys been making noise, I swear Must be something in the water down there I picked up my guitar and I started to strum This little number where I come from Way down a dirt road in a July air You can bet there's something in Jump on the top, feel like you can't fly. Well, that river's cold, man, but you won't care. Cause there's something in the water down there. And she's five foot something, legs on long and tame. Sitting on that river bank with them toes in the sand. Them southern. If you want to slow down, if you want to go down, if you want to jump in, let me get on. Sitting on that riverbank with her toes in the sand You Georgia girls, I tell you nothing compares Yeah, there's something in the water down there Must be something in the water down there Yeah, yeah
Y'all, uh, when I moved up to Nashville, um, obviously started writing songs a lot. Um, I was on the road, I was touring, and um, I started getting hooked up with some really great writers. Started learning a lot about um, kind of the art of writing a song and uh, what goes into it. And um, I've always been a fan of writing songs uh, just as much as performing them and getting up on stage and singing. And to me, being an artist kind of goes hand in hand with those two things, writing and performing. So. Um, I was writing two, three hundred songs a year, still am, and um, it's so funny, it's kind of like, um, it's a creative thing that gets in you and you, can, you just have to do it, you know, you have something you want to say, and uh, it's very uh, therapeutic to get it out, you know, uh, in a creative way like writing. And um, the funny thing though, obviously when you're writing three hundred songs a year, you can't always put out every song you write. So um, every once in a while you write a song that um, might be for another artist. And uh, that's been something that's really blessed me along the way, being able to write songs for other artists and uh, have them believe in a project and a song enough to put it out and, um, and record it. Um, so uh, I was writing a song one day with uh, two guys I love writing with, Justin Wilson and Matt Rogers. And um, we were just honestly sitting around three acoustic guitars. We didn't really have an idea. Uh, we just started jamming, really. Uh, and we started playing this cool, like, little just funky, like... Had this, like, almost throwback Eagles kind of vibe to it. And um, we didn't have a title, didn't have a, a real idea or concept to go with it. But we honestly wrote this song in, like, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And it just kind of fell out. And when we got done writing it, uh, we all kind of looked at each other and were like, what are we going to call this thing? And... Uh, Matt said, let's just call it We Went. That's like the last line of the chorus. So um, we ended up uh, doing a little demo of it. And honestly, I didn't even think it was that great of a song. I thought it was kind of weird. Didn't really have a direction. It was a little like ADD scattered to me. Uh, but still, it was like, all right, 
yeah, let's pitch it to some people. You know, for me as an artist, I was like, I don't think it really fits the vibe I'm looking for. But um, we ended up pitching it, and our publisher sent it to Randy Hauser, who I'd been a fan of forever. Um, and Randy, just a great singer, uh, just one of the best voices in country music. So um, we sent it to Randy and his team. He ended up liking it, liking it enough to where he wanted to record it. And then we got a call a few weeks later that he wanted to put it out as his first single on a record. So um, it went to be my first number one, went on to be my first number one uh, as a songwriter and uh, really kind of paved the way for me, not only as a songwriter, but as an artist and just kind of gave me some uh, some credibility and gave me confidence, you know, to know that I was kind of doing the right thing, that I was on the right path. And um, the funny thing about the whole song, it was a full circle moment. I'd I'd been playing bars downtown, you know, up and down Broadway, just struggling to make, you know, tip tip bucket money every night to just pay uh, for gas to go back and forth to Nashville from Georgia. Um, I was just couch crashing. I didn't have an apartment or anything like that. And uh, one night I was playing my regular gig, and um, it was a three-hour show downtown at Puckett's, which is right next to Tootsie's, if you guys have ever been to, to Broadway, uh, if you've ever been to Nashville, right across from, uh, you know, the original Grand Ole Opry, the Ryman. And I was playing one night, and there was a guy sitting in the back, and he was, like, really paying attention, really into the show. And I was playing an original song called I'll Go Home uh, that I'd written when I was still living in Georgia and put it out in my first EP. This guy gets up, and he walks up to the tip bucket, and he drops a $100 bill in the tip bucket. Well, as he got closer, I realized it was Randy Hauser. And um, I was in the middle of a song, so I couldn't stop and thank him, you know, and be like, man, I'm a huge fan. So he drops a $100 bill in the tip bucket, he walks out. Fast forward two years later, we write the song, we send it to Randy, he puts it on radio, and then about a year after that, we're back at Tootsie's, which is uh, right across from that club I used to play, all those cover sets at and uh, for tip bucket money, and uh, we're having our number one party for this song. So it really was a full circle moment, and I was telling Randy the whole story, uh, backstage and man and really kind of got emotional you know all my family had driven up there from Na Haversham County half the county was there which was so awesome to have that support of your hometown and uh, it was just a moment that was really full circle that I'll never forget so uh, this one's called We Went and uh, I'll always be grateful to Randy for making this a number one. one two one two three four Get a cash, put on the gas Ready and throwing up a little dust Like a pickup truck Dust in the mud, but ain't nobody slowing us down Right now She said I need a little something With some get up and go And nobody knows how to get me going Quite like you do You're doing the things to do Wanna give this sleepy poor on time Something to talk about So we went tail lights from some blue lights chasing good on path through the corner of county road 44 no fence jumping the ditch feel so good didn't want to dance so we went looking for dives to give us some time let the heat cool out doing some dancing didn't take long a couple of songs you know it's last call when the law comes walking in yeah. They are lights fading from some blue lights chasing good on fat to the corner County Road 44 Talk of fence Jump in the ditch Feel so good Didn't want to end So he went rocking through the radio Fogging up the windows Headlights Get a cash foot on the gas Ready and throwing up a little 
dust like a pickup truck Dust in the mud But ain't nobody slowing us down Right what a talented performance. I'm so glad that we have the opportunity tonight to see more of John King and what he has to offer for ASUBB with our virtual concert. His talent reminds me of the many talented students that we have here at ASUBB. I'm right now in uh, the theater in the Owen Center on the BB campus. We have the only fully working student theater in the any two year in the entire state of Arkansas. In fact, the ASUBB theater program is one of the largest student theater programs of any college or university in the entire state. But in addition to theater, uh, we have a fully functioning band and choir. We're the only home to the state's only vet tech program, a fully working farm. We have students that put their talents to skills here while they're learning and earning a two-year or certificate degree at ASUBB. One of the programs that we're especially proud of in student life is our leadership program uh, where students have the opportunity to learn one-on-one -on -one with a mentor and with peers through our leadership curriculum. And it's my honor right now to introduce to you the SGA or student government president, Bailey Pendergrass for a special presentation from our student government. Hi, my name is Bailey Pendergrass. I'm the student government president at Arkansas State University, BB. I am so excited to announce that SGA has put together a project to thank families for supporting their students through college experience. Enjoy. Thank you family for encouraging me, supporting me, and loving me through my journey at ASUBB. I'm thankful for my family's unconditional love for me and their willingness to always lend a helping hand and a listening ear. Thank you family. I want to thank my family for supporting me in my decision to come to college and always encouraging me and being there for me when I need them. Thank you, family, for everything that you do. I'd like to thank my teachers for supporting me through college and my, sometimes my parents, whenever they were around, to help me through my math courses, anything I had questions on. The teachers also helped me very much, too. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Just want to thank you for all your love and support. Um, hey, Alicia. I want to thank you guys so much for supporting me through my college experience. It's been really hard, but through your support, I've really been able to flourish. Thank you, family, for inspiring me and motivating me, and also being realistic with me. <laughs> and I want to thank my family for giving me the, the encouragement to just pursue my college career, and I wanted to uh, get them Thanks for uh, giving me the ability to be able to persist through hard times. Thank you, family, for believing in me and motivating me. Hey, I just wanted to take a second and say thank you to everyone who's helped me through my college experience. My mom, my dad, my daughters, my teachers, my mentors, and my husband. And I thank you all so much. Thank you, family, for loving me and supporting me through everything. Thank you, family, for loving me and supporting me and guiding me through this experience. Thank you, family, for always being there for me to support me and encourage me. Wow. Thank you, Bailey and Student Government, for that amazing video project. It's so rewarding to be able to see students personally say thank you to their families. That is just an amazing project. But you know, it's to be expected. Our student government here at ASUBB has always been committed about thinking outside the box and servicing students. When the global pandemic hit a year ago this month, it was students that asked the question, how can we help service other students? Student government created the Student Emergency Hope Fund, where students can request emergency funds to help with expenses that create barriers to their academic success. And then they increased and expanded the campus food pantry to provide automatic food boxes for residents on campus over the summer and winter breaks and advertising more to service our commuter students. So thank you students for your wonderful contribution to our campus. As we continue tonight's celebration, we have one more set of John King. Enjoy. One, two, three, four. You got that fake smile 
all up on your face, girl. Don't think I don't see through it. Coming out tonight, hiding all that heartbreak, baby. Nah, I just don't know how you do it. And maybe I'm in the same boat, floating around the ocean. I'm just hoping you could come throw me a line. Hey, I just catch a smile. Can I buy you a drink, baby? Put down your phone. There ain't nothing new on Instagram, so leave it alone. Come be lonely with me. Take a shot in the dark Baby, let's just let tomorrow be hard Tonight, let's make it easy well, That look in your eyes is a dead giveaway Man, I can tell it got you hurting uh. And I know what I'm about to say is such a cliche, baby But that dude ain't even worth it Ever think you and me We would put it this same bar At this same time Feels more than meant to be Since misery loves company Can I buy you a drink? Baby, put down your phone There ain't nothing new on Instagram So leave it alone Come be lonely with me Take a shot in the dark Baby, let's just let tomorrow be hard Tonight, let's make it easy Oh, let's make it easy Can I buy you a drink? Baby, put down your phone There ain't nothing new on Instagram So leave it alone Don't be lonely with me Take a shot in the dark Baby, let's just let tomorrow be hard Tonight, let's make it easy Oh, let's make it easy Y'all, uh, I really appreciate you having me. Let me do this virtual concert for y'all. Um, again, I wish I was there uh, to play for you guys live in person. Um, I can't wait to get back out and do real concerts again and, uh, and not have to worry and for everybody to be healthy again. Until then, this is what we got and um, just really thankful we can make this work. Uh, I want to play y'all one of my favorite songs I've written so far to date. And uh, honestly, it's because I wrote it for one of my favorite bands of all time. And I never would have thought in a million years when I was a kid, uh, growing up loving Hootie and the Blowfish. My mom, dad were huge Hootie and the Blowfish fans. I don't even know if y'all know who that is, but hopefully you do, or your, your mom or your dad probably does. But um, I was writing one day, and my publisher calls me here in town at Sony. And they said, how would you like to go write a song with Hootie and the Blowfish today? And I was like, yes, I would love that. They hadn't even put out a song in 15 years, you know, since uh, forever. And so I went in and wrote this song with the band guys, and they were so great. And it was cool to see people you look up to like that, you know, as legends, as role models, be so down to earth and so humble. And uh, I went in and wrote this song. I had this idea called Rolling, and they liked it. And they ended up they ended up putting it on their new record that just came out uh, last summer. So I'm gonna play on my version of uh, Rolling. One, two, three, four. Up on top of the world, some days stuck in old. Some days the only thing left to do is watch you go up in smoke. You say, Whoa, now, whoa, now, let it all go. Hey, yeah, just let it all go. Cause that sun's gonna shine, leaving these clouds way behind. Some things just look bad. Coming in on the coast of Carolina Rolling Now we don't got no S going Just to keep on rolling I rode a 
about you, I can show you Some life more salt in my brain A lot less work, a lot more play A lot more sway in my tree <laughs> Window, windows roll down But that sun's gonna shine Leaving these clouds way behind Some things just look better in a rear view Yeah, yeah they do Coming in on the coast of Carolina Rolling Now it don't gotta know where it's going Just to keep on rolling okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Cause that sun's gonna shine Leaving these clouds way behind Some things just look better in a rear view Yeah, yeah they do So um, this next song, y'all, is a song that if I had to pick a song and say, um, as an artist, there's one song that kind of made and defined my career as an artist, it'd be this one. And I honestly just think because the way fans reacted to it when I released it, I knew when we wrote this it was a special song, but I had no idea that it would have the impact that it did. And um, I walked into a co-write one day uh, with my buddies Jamie Paul and Paul Giovanni. And um, we were just having a conversation about, um, you know, the growing pains you go through with a spouse, with a girlfriend, a boyfriend, what, you know, uh, your companion in life. And um, you obviously, you know, when you're like me, I've been dating my high school sweetheart since I was 15. We're happily married now. We have, you know, a baby girl. You go through a lot of changes in that span of time. And um, we wanted to write this song about, you know, those little arguments you get along, you know, you get in along the way um, that we all go through. And looking back, I'm so glad that something like that didn't derail our, you know, our marriage, our relationship, and that we were able to stick through it through those hard times. So um, this song's called Try Saying Goodbye, and it's just like, it's about not having to say goodbye to those people that you love for something as foolish as pride. So um, it's a cool song because I think it rings true in a lot of different situations for people. I've had fans reach out and say, you know, I just lost a loved one. And, you know, obviously it applies in that situation, you know, when it's hard to say goodbye. Um, and it also applies, I had someone reach out who was a, a soldier stationed in Afghanistan that said they hadn't seen their family in a year and a half and that this song was so important to them and, and really kind of helped them cope with what they were going through. So as a songwriter, as an artist, that's exactly what I write songs for, uh, to help people. And something like that absolutely makes, uh, it just makes a song for me. So anyways, this one's called Try Saying Goodbye. Thank you guys so much for all the love on this one so far. Uh, 15 million streams and climbing, and uh, it just continues to blow my mind. One, two. So you said this and she said that and Before you know it blows up fast It's a teardrop falls in a slamming door and You don't even know what you're fighting for Hey, nobody said love was easy And I know it can be kind of hard to swipe Sorry was the hardest word You were ever gonna have to say to her In your whole life Try saying goodbye Try saying goodbye You fall like crazy just to get this far yeah, You got the girl and she stole your heart now you're on a stool shooting out, he proved yeah. But you ain't done nothing that you can't undo 
It ain't too late to hey. Try standing in the dust while the woman you love puts you in the rear view and drives away. Hey, nobody said love was easy, and I know it can be kind of hard to swallow your pride. You thought sorry was the hardest word you were ever gonna have to say to her anymore. Oh, like try saying. All right, so I want to play a fun one, y'all. Um, this is one we always do in our live show. It has always been one of my favorite songs to play. And I remember hearing this when I was a kid and thinking, uh, man, like, that's the sound right there. I remember driving in my, my dad's old 85 black Silverado pickup truck and hearing this come on uh, the FM station and thinking, uh, dang, what a song. And uh, it's called Fish in the Dark. I'm sure y'all know it. So, uh, yeah, let's have a little fun. And uh, if you know it, sing along with us. One, two, three, four. Lazy yellow moon coming up tonight, shining through the trees. Crickets are singing and lightning bugs are floating on a breeze. Baby, get ready. <laughs> Cross the field where the creek goes back by the old storm road. I'm gonna take you to a special place that nobody knows. Baby, get ready. Y'all ready? Fishing in the dark, lying on the back, sand count stars where the cool grass glows. Hey. Down by the river in the full moonlight, be falling in love in the middle of the night, moving slow. Hey. Spend the whole night through, feel so good to be. Spring is almost over and the summer's come. Days are getting long. Waiting all winter for the time to be right just to take you along. Baby, get ready. Yeah. <laughs> it don't matter if we sit forever and the fish don't bite. Jump in the river and cool ourselves from the heat of the night. Baby, get ready. Yeah. Ooh, you and me gon' be in the dark, light on a bad sand can start.
What another great performance by John King. I'm so glad that we have one more left to go. Tonight, again, is about celebrating families and the importance that families have in supporting our students through their college success. Like I mentioned at the beginning of tonight's program, almost a year ago, students who were serving on our Awards and Recognition Committee suggested that we create some mechanism, some way of honoring the families that support them through their college journey. And the birth of Family Day happened in 2020, but it also came along with a special recognition that we just started last year, the ASU BB Family of the Year. Students for two months in the beginning of spring had the opportunity to write an essay and answer key questions about why they felt their family should be nominated for Family of the Year. This special recognition comes along with not only an opera private opportunity uh, to meet the chancellor and some free swag, uh, but also the student receives a $500 gift certificate to our bookstore and the family's name is added to our perpetual plaque that's located here in the Student Center for years to come. This year, we are super excited to recognize the family of Michael Taylor of Jacksonville, Arkansas as ASU BB's 2021 Family of the Year. Earlier last week, the family came to campus and in a private ceremony was recognized and honored by our Chancellor, Dr. Jennifer Methvin. We recorded the event and here are some highlights of our 2021 ASU BB Family of the Year. The, the main reason why I nominated my family is because of the unconditional love that they show me and the supportiveness that they show me constantly um, from staying up with me one night when I realized I had a paper that I completely forgot about uh, till midnight to finish it or um, when I am crying and wanting to quit school, uh, pushing me to continue and just giving me encouragement. Um, when I am angry because school is overpowering, just uh, sitting there letting me vent and then just be like, okay, are you done? Like, are you, are you ready to go? Um, but yeah, just being there for me and loving me through everything, the good, the bad and ugly um, is really the main reason why I nominated my family because I sometimes feel like I don't get to show them the love that they show me and I don't, publicly get to um, say what they mean to me and in uh, just yeah well yeah that was uh, it was definitely a surprise and and it was uh, uh, you know you feel humble about it and and, and it's uh, you feel that it, it goes back to what you know the family and, the, and love and, and the, the devoted to you know her education and her family that you can balance that together uh, and, and, you know, and, and basically come out on top, uh, you know, you, you gotta keep going, you don't wanna give up, you know, and like I said, going back to the down times, I mean, you know, it, it can be, I guess, uh, discouraging at times, or has been, I mean, you know, that's, uh, it's just how it goes, and then uh, overcome it, and, and she's, that's what she's doing, she just overcome, and, and, you know, I try to not think about it so much the family or, or me personally I don't I can't speak for anybody else but me personally I don't I don't look at it it's anything that I do necessarily but I mean I know in the scheme of things uh, you know being there supporting her does make a difference and so it really doesn't surprise me Michael is really all about her family she is very um, as much as we support her and helping her through this process she is 
uh, most days the glue that holds me together. I work full time and take care of my grandson a lot and she is just my right hand girl. So um, she's very proud of her family. She's very encouraged by her family. So it doesn't surprise me at all. It doesn't surprise me that she would take the time to nominate us and interview and talk to people and because uh, I also know what a big step that is for her to like carry on conversations like she has. And so it didn't surprise me. It's, it's an honor that she would take time to do that for us. Um, she's definitely had, you know, her moments where she's just wanted to, you know, give up and, you know, take a break or, you know, just, um, just stay focused. Um, but she's definitely pushed through and it's awesome just watching her grow you know, because she is the baby of the family. So it's nice to see that um, that she doesn't give up no matter how hard it gets. You know, she, she makes time for her career and her education, and that's just awesome to watch. You know, she's definitely made a difference in my life from watching her grow and how easy it is, not easy, how easy she makes it look, you know, to go after something that you're, you know, passionate about. So. She's definitely helped me get to that point. So it's nice to just, it was nice to watch her grow in that. Um, I would say thank you for sticking by my side. Um, I know I've changed my major three times and I've talked a lot of different, about different route, going different routes. Um, so just thank you for sticking um, by me, by my side, while I try to figure out this crazy world we live in and going through even before COVID, um, I changed my major twice before COVID and then changed it again during COVID. And so just thank you guys for loving me and supporting me no matter what I said and all the crazy dreams that I've come up with. Thank you for pushing me to pursue those dreams. And I love you guys. I think just to Michael, I would say I'm super proud. Um, I tell her a lot, probably not enough, but she really is my right hand girl. And um, just keep doing what you're doing. God hadn't brought you this far to let you go. And I know that he has an amazing journey for her life. And that's what I'd say. But yeah, I'm extremely proud. And, uh, and I'm proud of all, you know, the whole family, you know, with everything that's been going on. And uh, I'm just glad she can uh, continue to, and she, she wants to, and she's encouraging uh, for me to hear. And, and, it's, and it's definitely, uplifting for me to hear what she's her future what she plans on you know plans on going forward with in education so that you know that's a big big thing um that's her unconditional love um she definitely um she loves when she doesn't have to you know she puts people before herself when she doesn't need to and so like it's just the unconditional love that she has the whole family has she's learned it from great great people so it's just nice to know that even in all the chaos and all of the anxiety that you know her family is the most important thing to her Wow, thank you, Taylor family. This is just an amazing story about how you have supported Michael through her college career. We're super uh, excited as ASUBB to be able to su support and honor you as the 2021 Family of the Year. It is, it's just, it's truly moving to see how connected and committed to y'all are as a family and to seeing Michael excel in her own success journey. Before we end uh, tonight's program, we have one more set with John King. So enjoy. So I wanna play y'all a crazy one here. And when I tell you the title of the song, don't get scared, don't leave the stream. Um, this one is called Hooker Shoes. It's not about hookers, don't worry. Uh, well, it could be about hookers. No, it's not about hookers. Um, it's about high heel shoes. And the reason I wrote it is my wife has like 20 pairs in the closet. That's an exaggeration, probably like five to 10 pairs of shoes. That's her obsession. So um, I thought, what the heck? Like. 
Girls love their shoes. They look good in them. I don't know how you guys walk in them, so you deserve a song about it. Ladies, if you got a pair of shoes you love, this is your jam. It's called Hooker Shoes. One, two, three, four. Hooker shoes, y'all. So there's some of those songs that just stick with you, uh, that you love and can't get out of your head. And this is one I remember hearing for the first time when I was a kid. And just being in love with just the melody, the beat, the energy of this song. And uh, it's been one we've covered pretty much every show I've ever played just because the crowd always reacts to it. And uh, one of the coolest moments when I moved to town, I got to write with this guy, the artist, a guy named David Lee Murphy, who recorded and put this song out. And uh, he was just the coolest dude, very laid back, and a heck of a songwriter. And uh, we actually were playing a show together down in Florida, and he brought me up on stage, and we got to sing this together. So um, it was a really cool moment, and uh, I always love playing this when it brings back great memories. It's called Dust in the Bottle. One, two, three. Sitting on a porch swing when her 
real close, baby. Then we drove down to the lake road and watched the sun sink in that big red sky. I reached on the front seat and said, I hear something special. And it's just been waiting for a night like tonight. Yeah. Might be a little dust on the bow. But don't let it fool you about what's inside. Yeah. Might be a little dust on the bow. But it's one of those things that gets sweeter on the I want to play this song uh, because it's a song that really started my whole artist career. Uh, first song I ever released to country radio, and uh, it's a song that I love to close all our shows with because it just has a um, a very uh, energetic, fun, uh, excited message. And it's just tonight, tonight is going to be the best night of our lives. And I was so uh, just pulled in from the second I heard this song because as a listener, uh, it's just what you want to hear. You're at a concert, with, you're with all your friends. Uh, it's a Friday night, it's a Saturday night, and it's like, yes, tonight is going to be the best night of our lives. And this is actually the only song I've ever released that I haven't, that I didn't write. I wasn't a part of. And uh, I just so believed in this song and, and the message and the fun behind it that uh, I wanted to put it out. So uh, this one's called Tonight Tonight, the song that started it all for me. And uh, thank you guys so much again for having me, having a blast. And uh, here we go. One. Two, three, four. Well, everybody knows tonight, 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 tonight is gonna be the best night of our lives. Yeah, so take it in for a minute, yeah. Sidewalk, reading the faces, everybody's going to different places all week long. I'm working for a paycheck that barely makes it, living for a dream. I, I got to chase it, the beat goes on. Everybody knows tonight. Come on in morning, I'm in 
got my money to be Y'all, thanks so much for having me for this virtual concert. Had an absolute blast. Can't wait to hopefully see you guys in person next year. In the meantime, stay safe and healthy. God bless. What an amazing evening where we've had the opportunity to uh, learn about how family supports students. We've got to entertain ourselves by watching an amazing performance by John King and his band. Thank you, Dr. Methvin. Thank you, Bailey. Thank you to the Taylor family for all uh, that you do to support us. I want to thank uh, Advancement and our marketing team here at ASUBB for help making this virtual week and this virtual concert happen. Thank you to the viewers for participating. Whether you're watching this live tonight or recorded later on YouTube, we appreciate the opportunity for us to come together as one big Vanguard family and to celebrate the families that support our students. Good evening and good night.